Dr. Hatcher, thank you very much for joining in. Well, you know, I want to start this conversation by asking you about COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, the cases uh, have reduced, but there seems to be now a surplus of vaccines as well. Uh, what is the status across countries? Well, we are seeing uh, uh, that we the supply challenges that we faced before have really been addressed. The demand has declined somewhat, but there is still demand for COVID vaccines. Um, my organization, CEPI, uh, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, we think we continue to need better vaccines, vaccines that can prevent transmission and ideally protect against not just the COVID that we have now, but the COVID that evolves in the future. But uh, do you think that people are now taking forward COVID vaccines? And, you know, from a company perspective, do you think that it will probably become something which will be an annual dose as well? It has been spoken about, but not really fructified till now. Well, uh, commercial demand for COVID vaccines is, has declined from its peak, you know, probably a year ago or so. So the drivers for vaccine development now, I think, is going to require continued public sector investment. We've got a program that we're funding uh, where we have allocated around 230 million US dollars to develop what we're calling broadly protective coronavirus vaccines. These would be vaccines that protect against COVID, but also against SARS and MERS and other coronaviruses. You mentioned the next or the evolution of COVID-19. Can you elaborate? Are we expecting it to probably uh, expecting another wave or uh, maybe another mutation? Well, the vaccines that we have are really, really good at preventing severe disease and death, which is important, but they aren't preventing transmission. And so there's still a lot of COVID circulating and every new case of COVID presents an opportunity to the virus to mutate and evolve. So we're seeing continued evolution of the virus. Every year with flu, for example, the flu virus continues to mutate and over time it will migrate away from the human immune response or from the vaccines that we have. So we have to update the vaccines. I think that's what we're anticipating likely to be the case with COVID as we continue to live with this virus in future years. COVID-19 also taught us that, uh, for example, India, as well as other countries and companies have the ability to get to market a successful product or drug which can treat many people as well. Uh, is that what we can expect, that maybe there can be an acceleration of innovation from what we've seen in COVID? Well, I think, I think the response to COVID, you know, changed our understanding of how quickly we could develop vaccines. What we used to think would take about 10 years, we actually compressed to under a year. I would love to see the innovations that we evolved to respond to COVID being applied to the development of vaccines for other applications so that we can speed up the, the tempo of innovation. Lastly, what would your plans for India be? But we're here. This is the first time we've been able to visit India since the pandemic began. So we've got a lot of catching up to do. We have a lot of partners here. But it's also a wonderful time to visit India because of India's leadership of the G20. And India has put health security and thinking about how we respond to future pandemics pretty high on their agenda. So we're having an interesting set of discussions both with our government and our industry partners. All right, Dr. Hatchett, thank you very much for joining in and speaking with CNBC TV 18.